You are Locked On Longhorns, your daily podcast on the Texas Longhorns. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked on Longhorns, the show. Jonathan Davis, your host. We're talking reactions to the first Longhorn scrimmage that took place on Saturday, August 13th. A lot to talk about. Some quick housekeeping notes to get into. First, Roshan Johnson, Junior Angelau, and Isaiah Nayor all left the scrimmage with injuries. Uh, we'll have to wait and see the diagnosis on that and how long they'll be away from the field. Alfred Collins dealing with the injury, expected to be out four to six weeks. Jade Barron was in a boot hearing that it's mostly precautionary, but once again, we'll have to wait and see on the official diagnosis and the official timetable for return. We're going to start off with Quinn Ewers and Hudson Card and the quarterback battle that is very real. They've been competing now since March 22nd. That was the first official spring practice, and they've been competing long enough for us to develop themes, for us to hear how Hudson Card is practicing, how Quinn Ewers is practicing, how they're progressing and who is leading or lack thereof in the quarterback battle. And the consistent theme that we've heard since March is that neither quarterback has been able to separate themselves from one another. Most people, including myself, thought that it was a foregone conclusion that at some point, Quinn Ewer's natural talent would take over and he would become the starting quarterback of this football team and surpass Hudson Card in this quarterback competition. There are a lot of people that thought there wasn't even a quarterback competition. There's still plenty of time for that to happen, but as of now, that has not happened yet. I think one of the reasons for that is he's young, and we know that Sark's system is very intricate and is very detailed and it's very complex, and it takes a while for any quarterback to learn, let alone a young quarterback who's transferring to a new university. I think also what we've seen, another theme that has been consistent since the spring is there's been some turnover issues, some interceptions with Quinn Ewers. He often, as he did in the scrimmage yesterday, makes the splash play, the best play of the game. We heard about the pass he made yesterday in the scrimmage uh, to Casey Kane, which was described as the best pass of the day on a deep ball. But then the very next play, he throws an interception to Jaron Thompson because he didn't see him. We saw in the orange and white game, the best play of the day was the play action deep touchdown pass he made to Isaiah Nayor. But there was also the play where he didn't see, I believe it was Anthony Cook, and threw an interception in the orange and white game. And so just him still learning the playbook, but also his inability to protect the ball, at least what we've seen in practice thus far in the spring and now in the fall thus far, is the reason that he has not been able to surpass Hudson Card in the quarterback competition. And I think Hudson Card, who has had the natural advantage having more experience in college, playing in Sark's system, knowing Sark, has come into this season more confident and has more command of the offense and looks better than he did last year. But I think there's still some flaws that showed up at times and were part of the reasons that he was replaced by Casey Thompson. Some of those same issues have shown up in the spring and thus far in the fall. Happy feet. And not being able to, you know, show command and stand in the pocket under duress and deliver the ball and some issues and inconsistency throwing the deep ball. Last year in 2021, Hudson Card was three of 13 on throws 20 plus yards. That's not going to cut it, especially in Sark's offense, who wants to emphasize getting the ball downfield. So I think you have a Hudson Card who has been more steady but hasn't been able to separate himself from Quinn Ewers. And I think Quinn Ewers, who has been able to make the splash plays and at times splashes the talent that we saw at South Lake Carroll and made him the number one overall recruit in his class, has shown the frequency to turn the ball over. And turnovers lose games. And Sark would be a fool to think that these interceptions that keep showing up in these practices and these scrimmages won't show up in the games. I have a lot of confidence that by September 3rd, these quarterback issues will be largely fixed. I have a lot of confidence that 
both quarterbacks are really good and have played well. And there's small issues that are nagging and kind of plaguing them. We also heard about uh, really some happy feet, but some bad body language as well in the first scrimmage from the quarterbacks. And I know that that's one thing that Sark hates more than anything is bad body language because he wants a quarterback to be a leader and show command of his offense. And so I think overall, as they get more confidence, as they play better in these practices and these scrimmages, and as they get more cohesion amongst their teammates in the offense, I think that they'll be a lot better. And I think that whoever is the starter going into the season, Sark will be really confident that he can win a lot of games with. It's also just the first scrimmage. So we're reacting to just the first scrimmage, but by the second and third one, and going into the season, we might hear that the quarterbacks are playing way better and have a clear understanding in who's going to start and be really confident in who's going to be the start. But as of now, Hudson Card and Quinn Ewers have still been unable to separate themselves from one another in this quarterback competition. And it'll be interesting to see how fast Sark makes a decision or how fast Sark feels comfortable naming one of these quarterbacks a starter going into battle on September 3rd against Louisiana Monroe. The next thing I want to talk about is the offensive line because we saw some really interesting developments there. Once again, the freshman offensive line and the seven that have came in through this 2022 offensive line, all gas, no breaks class have been the story of fall camp thus far. And many people want to know how fast these freshmen can get on the field, how many of them will start and how they're looking in fall camp. And from everything we've heard, the reviews have been amazing, right? That these players have, have come in. They look the part. Large humans is the hashtag, the trademark of, of Kyle Flood and the type of players that he's brought in, the 12 offensive linemen he's brought in thus far. But not only that, they've came in and really given these older players with more experience and uh, experience in these college, you know, strength and conditioning programs a run for their money. Cole Hudson, who enrolled in January, worked his way up to first team by the end of the spring. And in the scrimmage yesterday, he was your first team right guard. Andre Carriage started off as the starting left tackle in the scrimmage. But by the end of the scrimmage, Kelvin Banks, who has really been the story of the offensive lineman, period, new and old, freshman left tackle out of Humble, Texas, he was the starting left tackle by the end of the scrimmage yesterday. And I believe that Kelvin Banks and Cole Hudson, as I've said many times on this podcast, really since the summer, are on track to be your starting left tackle and your starting right guard going into the season. Junior Angelow started off as your first team center when he went down. Jake Majors, who has experience being your starting center for the Longhorns, took over that position. You have Hayden Connor at left guard, who is very likely to be a starter week one. And then Christian Jones at right tackle, who seems to be the likely starter going into week one as well. Was the offensive line great? No. I thought that from everything we've heard, uh, you know, Junior Angelow's injury was very tough. You know, I think that's tough to deal with when you're talking about from a cohesion standpoint. And we just heard that the defense won the day. So you have to kind of charge blame to all units, receivers, running backs, quarterbacks and offensive line. But I thought. What was encouraging was Kelvin Banks stepped in and looked really good from everything we've heard. Cole Hudson um, just continues to look good as a first time true freshman since he enrolled early in January. You have to be encouraged by that. And if Jake Majors is your starting center, you have to be encouraged about his experience at the position. We've heard nothing but good things about Hayden Connor, uh, you know, since the spring, uh, you know, about his mindset and his mentality, trying to win every rep, him being really aggressive up front. I think that's going to pay dividends for the Longhorns this year. And then Christian Jones has been able to fight off, you know, some really stiff competition. We heard a lot of good things about Cam Williams. We know his size, um, his ability to, you know, kind of dominate and bully people um, with his strength as well. And, and Christian Jones has been able to hold him off. So, um, you know, disappointing kind of first scrimmage for the offense, you know, especially dealing with three key injuries on all, all on the offensive side. Uh, but, you know, just give credit to the defense who we'll talk about next, especially Deshaun Jameson. I think it's time for Longhorn Nation to put some respect on his name. We're going to talk about him next. But coming up, a first a word from LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege. That's LinkedIn.com slash LockedOnCollege to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
So once again, I said we got to put some respect on Deshaun Jameson's name because I've talked about themes. And, you know, since these players have been competing since March 22nd, it's now almost five months later. There's things that we've continued to hear over and over again. And you can project going into the season, whether that's who's going to start, who's going to be big contributors for this team, or who just looked really good coming into the 2022 season. And it's hard to talk about this Texas football team and who shined in the spring and the fall without talking about the play of Deshaun Jameson. Deshaun Jameson has five plus interceptions since fall camp started. He had an interception, a pick six yesterday in the scrimmage, which is now, I believe, since I've been reporting on the team in the spring and the fall, at least the fourth, fourth pick six I've heard about from Deshaun Jameson. Deshaun Jameson is one of the most controversial football players on this team. When I talk to Longhorn Nation, whether it's in the comments or just talking to people I know, whoop de whoop, a lot of people talk about, oh, I've seen enough from Deshaun Jameson. He gets beat a lot. He takes chances, double moves, all of this. And I'm familiar with this, not only being a Longhorn fan and see Deshaun play, but also being a Cowboys fan, and it's kind of the same narrative around Trayvon Diggs, who was an all-pro corner, had 11 interceptions, but by most accounts, led the league in yards given up. But it's time we put some respect on Deshaun Jamison's name. Because turnovers win football games. Will Deshaun Jamison give up some yards? Yes. Will he get beat at times? Yes. But he gets his hands on the ball and he's been doing that since the spring. Like I said, he has five plus interceptions since fall camp started. Every practice you hear about him getting an interception. He has four plus pick sixes. He's reading the ball well, reading the quarterback well, playing fast, playing instinctual. And we'd be hard pressed to believe that the way that he's played in the spring and the fall won't translate to the season. And I would expect him to get at least four interceptions this year just off the way that he's played in the spring and the fall alone. And by all accounts, he's played really fast and looks really good and is getting his hands on the ball consistently. Turnovers win football games. And Deshaun Jameson is the best player on this football team right now in terms of taking the ball away from the opposing offense. Will he give up yards at times? Yes, but every corner does. But every corner doesn't have the ability to make a game-breaking play every time they step on the field at the cornerback position. And Deshaun Jamison is not only a threat to intercept the ball, but he's a threat to take it to the house every time he puts his hands on the ball. we got to put some respect on Deshaun Jamison's name. He's going to be a huge reason why this defense will be better in 2022. Sticking with the defensive backs, I want to talk about the star position because Jade Barron was out, um, you know, with the boot on and Michael Taft, uh, you know, the walk on, uh, he was famous for being Arch Manning's vis or host on his visit. I should say his, uh, host visit, visitor host, Arch Manning's visit. Michael Taft was the host of Arch Manning's visit. And he's been getting the second team reps at star, you know, just a very smart football player who is a walk on, but we've heard from all reports that he's going to get a lot of playing time this season. They expect him to be on the field. But Jalen Gilbo got a lot of time at that position with Jade Barron being out. And from all accounts, he looked really good at that star position. Um, he was playing really fast, making plays on the ball, uh, was smart, was calling out the plays, um, and, and just re looked really good in the first full scrimmage for a true freshman. So I think you can expect some really good play uh, from that position, one from Jade Barron, um, who most people have said is one of the best corners on this team. I mean, even Oregon thinks so when they offered him 200 and K reportedly uh, $200,000 to enter the transfer portal and leave Texas. Uh, Michael Taft, we know he's an experienced walk on a very smart football player uh, who the coaches love and say he's going to play this year. And then Jalen Gilbo, um, a very talented, true freshman, a la uh, Terrence Brooks as well. Um, are two people that are going to get some playing time. And from all accounts in the first scrimmage, uh, Jalen Gilbo looked really good at that star position, as well as Michael Taft in place of Jade Barron. We're going to talk about the defensive line. I thought it was really key that we heard about Byron Murphy making plays up front. We've talked about just really this defensive line and the edge positions and the pass rush, but really an interior rush can do so much, one, to stop the run game, but to put pressure right in the quarterback's lap. 
And we've consistently heard about Byron Murphy's strength in his motor. And I think that showed up again yesterday um, in the scrimmage. Uh, but they said it's just hard to consistently block him one on one because he's such uh, a menace down low. He's just such an animal um, and, and relentless in getting uh, to the ball carrier and to the quarterback. So I think that's a really encouraging sign seeing that they're able to get some push and have some dogs uh, up front with that mentality uh, to consistently grind. Also heard some really good things about Tavondre Sweat, another young player uh, that was tasked as having a really good scrimmage, Jamon Tapp, uh, right? The edge rusher, freshman edge rusher out of Louisiana. Um, they said he's just got a grown man body and he's got a grown man mentality, right? And he's relentless to get and relentless and getting to the quarterback. Uh, we heard about Ovia Gofu, who's probably your most likely candidate uh, to be your pet, your best pass rusher outside of DeMarvey and Overshone uh, in specific situations. We heard that Ovia Gofu had a really good practice. I know that he sacked uh, Quinn Ewers once, um, also had a really good play, I believe, on Keelan Robinson um, in the defensive backfield. So uh, really encouraging things from the defense as a whole. We heard that the defense kind of won uh, the scrimmage and heard some really good things about some players on the defensive line, especially some young players um, and, and Jamon Tapp and uh, Byron Murphy. Uh, we know that Ovia Gofu uh, flashed at times last year, and most people think in a full time pass rushing role this year, he's going to be really good. I know that DeMarvian Overshone uh, had a sack as well coming up the middle. I'm not sure. Well, if he was coming up the middle, he would have been at the linebacker position, but we know that they're going to deploy him um as a, a pass rusher in certain situations as well um and then baron sorrells who I, I think that they're really uh you know hoping for a lot out of um and justice Finkley uh continue to flash at times too so the defensive line continues to be a uh i wouldn't say a concern but a question mark going into the season um the pass rush continues to be a question mark going into the season but i think where you have to have reason for optimism is it's going to be a pass rush by committee and they have a really talented committee. There still has to be a lot of development there because a lot of these players are young, as are they on most units on this football team. But like I said, when you talk about these names, I mean, a Baron Sorrells, Ovia Gofu, a Byron Murphy, a Tavondre Sweat, a Justice Finkley, you know, these are players that are very talented, a DeMarvian Overshone Russian. And so when they continue to develop and continue um, to just kind of get ingratiated to the speed of the game, you're going to have some players that you can go out there and throw out there on third downs that can really get to the quarterback and cause havoc. So um, as the season goes on, this defensive line is going to be better and better each week. And I think the encouraging thing that we're hearing is that they're playing with a lot of pursuit, playing with a lot of nastiness um, and, and really fighting downhill to get to the quarterback and fighting downhill to get to the ball. That's what you want. And I think the rest will take care of, it, take care of itself um, as they get into the season and get, get better each week. At the linebacker position, we continue to hear really good things about probably the player we've talked the most about on the defensive side on this podcast is Diamante Tucker Dorsey. Um, I believe he had another pick uh, in the scrimmage yesterday, but they talked about, as we've said on this podcast, he's just always around the ball. He's a thumper. He gets downhill and he hits hard, right? He has, he's 5'10", 215, but he plays like he's 6'2", 230, right? He's just uh, plays bigger than he is. He's fearless, right? And, and once again, when you talk about a player at the FCS level that was an All-American and constantly around the ball, it makes sense. You know, when you hear that he's made the jump to the FBS level and already in fall camp, um, he's making plays. I think he just has the mindset and the mentality that you want of an inside linebacker. Once again, fearless, gets downhill, is a thumper at the point of attack, and also is smart enough to make plays on the ball in the passing game. You know, I, I think that he definitely is a strength in coverage as well uh, against running backs. And I think you could even put him against tight ends at times if you need to. So I think that Diamante Tucker Dorsey has been more than advertised since they got him in the transfer portal. I think that, you know, he provides them a lot of versatility at the linebacker position. And we've talked ad nauseum about how the addition of Diamante Tucker Dorsey next to Jalen Ford not only gives you two dogs at the middle linebacker position, but allows you to move DeMarvey and Overshawn around a lot in this defense, especially as a pass rusher, which I think they've used already and has benefited them thus far, um, especially starting in the first scrimmage. So really good things um, coming up uh, on the defensive side. I, I thought that Diamante Tucker Dorsey was a huge addition from the day they got him. And it's already pandemic is as it, he looks to be the starting linebacker already. It's a reminder two weeks ago, he started off with the third team, you know, it could have been, you know, Sark wanted him to earn his way up to the first team, but it looks like that hasn't taken long. Uh, Diamante Tucker Dorsey has been great.
thus far. So coming up after a word from Built Bar, just kind of our final uh, reactions to, to the first scrimmage and how everything has gone in, in fall camp thus far and how these injuries may affect the team moving forward. If you haven't tried Built Bar Puffs yet, you are depriving yourself of one of life's greatest joys. And guess what? There's a new flavor. Ready? Delicious, indulgent cookie dough covered in chocolate. That's right. Built has done it again. Let me introduce you to your new favorite. Cookie dough chunk puffs have a light and chewy texture, real cookie dough chunks, and of course, they're covered in 100% real chocolate. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKEDON15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKEDON15. So two players I want to uh, mention really quickly um, that have kind of stepped up in the wake of injury. One, Jal I mean, Jalil Billingsley has went down uh, with the hamstring injury, and JT Sanders has come in and stepped up. Now, I've been JT high uh, from my stuff since I started this podcast uh, on January 31st, really talented player out of Denton who is learning the tight end position, but he has the athleticism and the strong hands. They say he catches everything that comes his way, saying that he could be one of the best tight ends in the country uh, if they could trust him as a blocker and he can kind of put everything together. And I'm not sure that that has happened yet, um, but they're really encouraged about what he can do as a pass catcher and his willingness to come in and take the challenge of blocking. Um, and people have said that, you know, with Jaleel Billingsley's injury and just kind of his talent, he's kind of separated himself uh, thus far in the tight end room. You know, all tight ends, of course, uh, as far as Helm Billingsley and JT Sanders are going to get a lot of playing time this year. But as of right now, especially after the first scrimmage, JT Sanders seems to be the alpha in the tight end room. I want to talk about Jonathan Brooks, who especially got some more time uh, and expects to get some more time with the injury to Roshan Johnson. Uh, this is a player that Longhorn Nation is really excited about. When you watch him, one thing that immediately stands out is just his vision, right? The vision that you typically don't see from a young player. He's instinctual and has the knack to kind of just follow tackles, find holes. He's patient and explodes through him. It kind of reminds me of not comparing him to Le'Veon Bell as a player, but when you used to just watch Le'Veon Bell and, you know, this football games are going at full speed, but he's kind of just dancing behind the offensive line. And that's what you see when you watch Jonathan Brooks play. He's kind of just kind of back there dancing, 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 boom, he hits the hole. And he has that kind of special talent and that special vision that you just don't see in a lot of running backs. And they talked about him in the scrimmage yesterday after Roshan Johnson went out. He continued to show that vision. He's just an explosive downhill running back whether it's inside the tackles or outside the tackles so uh when you lose a player like roshan johnson and you have the running back room that you have you're comfortable in the players that you have behind him when you talk about a keelan Rob keelan robinson a jonathan brooks and a Jaden blue led by b john robinson it's more about the leader i mean roshan johnson is a hell of a player of course but it's more about the leadership when he's talked about as one of the clear leaders and alphas on the team next to b john robinson but it helps you sleep a little bit better at night when you have players like Jonathan Brooks, who's expected to take a bigger role this year, especially uh, with the injury right now to Roshan Johnson. Um, and is a really talented football player who, like I said, when you watch him, um, you know, his, his vision just kind of stands out. Overall, I know that, you know, the offense we talked about didn't look great in the first scrimmage. But one, once again, you have to give credit to the defense. This is a defense that has a lot to prove has a chip on their shoulder and wants to be really good coming into the 2022 season. And so we as Longhorn fans should be encouraged that the defense is giving the offense trouble in the first scrimmage. Two, I think that Sark coaches the quarterbacks really hard. And I think that although the quarterback struggled at times, they look really good and the offense looks really good because they have some really talented playmakers. I think they have some key losses in the scrimmage with Roshan Johnson, Isaiah Nayor, and Junior Angelau going down. We'll see how they respond to that. But if they can get those players back and this offense continues to practice and continues to work on those kinks and details, this will be a high-flying offense as advertised. And Sark is going to fix these inconsistencies that we've seen with the quarterbacks. Once again, Quinn Ewers and Hudson Card have both been good. But, you know, Sark holds his quarterbacks to a higher standard. And I think as we get closer to the season and really after that Louisiana Monroe game, um, who they should win, regardless of who's at quarterback, I think we'll continue to see better play and then get more comfortable, especially as we get into Big 12 conference play. As we said on this podcast time and time again, this is a very young Texas team, half of this team being underclassmen, right? And 
they're going to get better each week and each week. So they're not going to be a finished product by September 3rd. They're not going to be a finished product by the uh, Alabama game. And they're not going to be a finished product by the first game in Big 12 conference play. But you're hoping that by the end of the season, this is a well-polished machine. And you're hoping that they got better each week and each week on their quest to being one of the participants in the Big 12 championship game at the end of the season. Thank you, Longhorn Nation, for tuning in to another episode of Locked On Longhorns, part of your Locked On podcast network, your team every day. We'll continue to uh, recap these press conferences, these uh, fall practices, and the scrimmages as we get closer and closer to the season. I can't wait to see some Longhorn football on September 3rd and moving forward. As always, Longhorn Nation.